Why are you running? Alright everybody, welcome back. So I was in the mood for a little bit of seal clubbing, so I decided to play one of the most busted aircraft in the game. That is the A4 Red, recently renamed to a -Yet. And this plane is absolutely nuts. Now you may be looking at it and thinking, well, which is a Skyhawk? Well, it gets a much better engine and it gets access to four 18G long-range IR missiles. And at 9.3, that is pretty ridiculous. It is one of the strongest aircraft in the game, especially because it also has flares, which means that you don't have to worry about an A-10, you know, coming at you, hitting you with an A-9L. I've seen a lot of people complaining about the F-104s and the other supersonics getting moved down, and this is the ultimate counter to them. You saw that F-104C just got absolutely smoked. So before I get on to the missiles, because I'll have a whole section for those later, I want to talk about the flight performance. So many of y'all are probably familiar with the A-4E and the American Tech Tree, the squadron vehicle. This is a whole nother beast. So it has a much stronger engine. Uh, this gives it a thrust to weight ratio similar to that of the MiG-17. So you have much better acceleration. And that really, really helps because the A-4 is a delta wing. And as I'm sure many of y'all are aware, at least you should be aware, delta wings bleed a lot of speed. Now, this can be very helpful in a dogfight when you're trying to get somebody overshoot. And by the way, look at that missile pull. That is just mwah. For 9.3, that is amazing. But in any case, like I was saying, it's really helpful, like for example, when you have an AV-8 behind you. You can sit there and go into a turn, bleed a bunch of speed, and get them to overshoot. Only problem is when you don't have the engine power to go ahead and get that speed back. Now, you do still have a little bit of an issue with it in the A4N, but not nearly as much. You can see the acceleration is actually not, not bad at all. Uh, you really need this if you're going to be using a Delta Wing aircraft. This is why planes like the Kefir are better than the Draken, at least in my opinion. Because they're both Delta Wings, but the Kefir has a much better thrust to weight ratio, which allows it to actually gain that speed back after it's gone ahead and blooded it all the way. But that increase in engine power is going to give you a better climb rate as well, which is also nice because your missiles are going to go further a higher altitude. So uh, I wouldn't be against climbing in this aircraft. It doesn't really help your performance, so I wouldn't climb it more than like three maybe four kilometers in most cases uh, if you really want to this thing can perform like 67 kilometers but i wouldn't really recommend it unless you're playing ground rb so i figure we can go ahead and talk about the missiles a little bit right now we're going to start off with what a lot of y'all have probably seen before and that is the shafrir 2. so the shafrir 2 is not an a9g unlike what a lot of people think it has much worse flare resistance and it has less range now it is 18g still for the reason this stat card is not everything. The AIM-9D is overall better, and the AIM-9G are overall better, but this Shafir being slower does allow it to pull pretty hard. Like, you see, that was a 1.4 kilometer shot in that MiG-15 bis, and it was able to pull for him. Now, in exchange for that, it does have worse drag. Like I said earlier, it has worse speed and range. Most of the time, if this missile burns out, it's not going to hit. It's kind of like the Red Top in that case, although it's not as bad. But the combination of slower speed and 18G pull, uh, plus the fact they have a pretty big gimbal limit, means that I'm pretty comfortable using it in close range situations. Like, that shot right there is only from 0.4 away on the F-104. I didn't feel comfortable shooting it, you know, Medefis from that range, so I just went ahead and lobbed off a Shafir and it got there no problem. Like I was saying earlier, though, I wouldn't say that Shafir is the good missile to use, and I would actually recommend using your custom loadout feature to go ahead and run two of each. Uh, because the AIM-90 is an overall superior missile. Now, it is caged, which you saw just right there, which means you can't really lead it. But it's more agile overall, because it has much better energy retention, and it's also faster, which means you're going to have much better range. If you use the AIM-9G or, like, the AIM-9H before, it has a very, very similar range of those. I think a little bit less, but for the most part, you're not going to be feeling the difference at all. Uh, you're able going to be able to use this missile at higher altitudes, at like 6, maybe 7 kilometers sometimes, but even at lower altitudes, you can use it at 2.5-3 kilometers against supersonic targets a lot of the time, uh, 4, maybe 5 against stuff like A-10s, and so you're able to use this to surprise them. Now, I don't know if you just saw, but I did actually go ahead and ignite my boosters. Uh, you can save them, you don't have to go ahead and use them, although they do hinder your flight performance a little bit, and so you're able to go ahead and get a lot of extra power for a couple of seconds at you know, pulling the dogfight. So if you're having, you know, an issue where you don't have a lot of energy, you can just go ahead and kick your boosters on. Uh, same thing, you know, if you're playing ground RB and you're circling over the enemy AA, you can use those to help maintain your energy. Here's a perfect shot with the AIM-9D, you know, two kilometer side aspect. It has no issues whatsoever. Easy kill. And he didn't see it coming because it was a strange aspect. 
I do kind of regret using that F5C because I'd have a much easier time catching him than I would this F104, and he's actually going to run away. I do have one out, though. It was really funny happened. I just remembered it. Uh, I'm going to skip to it real quick. Because this F104 decided to try and go ahead and dogfight with the hunter, and uh, he just flies in a straight line after overshooting and gets absolutely beamed by this hunter. It's hilarious. So you may be thinking, oh, well, that's all well and good, Lee, you know, but I don't play air. Well, good news for you, uh, the A4N is also very competent in ground RB. It's probably the best 9.3 cast aircraft in the game. So you can see it gets access to three Mavericks and two GBUs, and you can also bring in two Bullpups as well. Now, I don't bring the Bullpups as well because I rip a lot more often when I have those in the wings, and I also like having my AIM-9Ds just in case there's a plane up. But you have the capability if you really want to do so. And to be honest, I think that five guided munitions are good enough for the BR anyways. Like, like this, is, this is really good. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Mavericks, but at 9.3, they're still pretty viable. They do have issues. Like, you can see it didn't kill that Leopard. A direct hit with a 50-plus kilogram warhead didn't one-shot a Leopard, which has, like, 60, 70 mils of armor. I'm not too happy about that. But I was at least able to take out the Gepard and the Type 93, so I don't have to worry about AA. I had a ton of issues with the Mavericks just randomly dropping locks or locking onto the ground. And that's not even talking about the, the fact that they don't do damage sometimes when they hit. I've actually had them hit Tunguskas before, which has like no armor whatsoever. And it didn't kill them. You do, of course, also get walleyes, and I've actually had a better experience with these in the Mavericks, at least when it comes to more reliable damage, because they're just a bomb. So you don't have to worry about some weird, you know, heat warhead stuff. But in any case, I recommend running with assault fuse because they'll bounce off and, you know, go a couple meters away. And although most of the time it's fine, it's better to just go ahead and have them kill when they hit rather than have to wait a second or half or whatever, maybe let a tank get away. So these are also better at closer ranges than the Mavericks. The Mavericks take about a kilometer or two to get stabilized. Uh, with these, as long as you drop them close enough, they'll hit pretty much every single time. I haven't had any issues with that. These are also the extended range walleyes. So if you've used these on the A4 before, uh, those are just the normal walleyes, unless they changed them. Uh, these have extra gliding distance. So if you want to, you're able to lock somebody up from further away, you know, point your nose up in the air, drop the walleye, and then skedaddle, uh, because it'll kind of loft its way in there. But to be honest, most of the time I haven't found the use of being able to do that because the walleyes do still have the same issue of locking onto the ground that the, uh, that the Mavericks do. Although I've had less of an issue with it. It might just be placebo. Overall, though, this plane is excellent for ground RB and it slots in very well with the Israeli 9.3 lineup, which is one of the strongest lineups in the game. And it's the last one I'd actually recommend for the Israelis as well. So one last thing to note is I would actually recommend uh, if you are close enough locking in third person rather than with the first person camera. Uh, it does, of course, not give you any zoom, uh, but it's much more alive from my experience than trying to rely on the camera because it won't just randomly lock onto the ground. Although we do have another Maverick oopsie moment where it just decides to not connect here in a second. Not the TAM, that one does actually connect, but the other one, I'm not sure what happened. It either connected and didn't kill him or it just didn't connect at all. But overall, though, this plane is excellent. One of the best in the tree. If you play air or ground, I would 100% recommend you go ahead and try it out. It's one of like the three aircraft in the Israeli tree that you must play. In any case, hope you all enjoyed the video. Catch you next time. Peace.